Okay, so today we're going to be studying commas and semicolons. These two punctuation marks are the mis most misused in the English language. Can someone read the sentence on the board, please? Sure. Woman without her man is nothing. Okay, now, if I were to tell you to punctuate this sentence, where would you put it? What, what punctuations would you put where? I'd put a comma behind woman and the comma behind man. Okay. Now read the sentence with the correct punctuation. Woman without her man is nothing. Okay, you see how these two commas change the sentence, right? Yeah. Okay, now let's try something else. Say so you put the comma here. Can someone else read it for me this way? Woman without her man is nothing. Okay, so you see how moving one comma from one spot to another changes the meaning of the sentence completely? That's the importance of punctuation. That was the importance of this sentence. Okay. Okay, with that out the way, let's get into it. So there are actually eight different comma rules in the English language. The first being, can someone read this? Use commas to separate items in a list of three or more. Okay. Do you, know, do you guys get what that means? Mm -hmm. like, give me an example. Like, What's a list? Any kind of list. Like a grocery list, milk, eggs, bacon. Exactly, right? It could be groceries, sports, anything really. So here we have an example. I need to buy eggs, milk, lettuce, and bread. Where would you guys put the commas? Behind eggs, milk, and lettuce. Okay, right? Three or more items, so you put a comma after each one, right? Okay. Here's the second one. Can someone else read it? Use a comma to separate independent clauses, complete thoughts, when they are joined by the following conjunctions, and, or, for, nor, so, but, yet. Okay. So you guys know what conjunctions are, right? It's just these words right here. And, or, for, nor, so, but, yet. Okay. Let's see an example of this. I want to buy the new jacket, but it is too expensive. Where would you guys put the comma? After jacket. Okay. And do you know why? Because but is the conjunction. Right. And because I want to buy the new jacket is a sentence on its own, and it is too expensive is also a sentence on its own, right? And but because the word but is there, we put a comma instead of a period. Okay. Can someone do the third one, please? Use a comma to separate a dependent clause and complete thought. From an independent clause, complete thought. So an independent clause is a complete sentence, and a dependent is a sentence that can't be there on its own, right? So let's look at an example. Can someone read this, please? When I get older, I will be able to drive. Dependent, independent. All right, so when I get older is a dependent sentence because it's not a sentence on its own. And I will be able to drive is a sentence on its own, right? You don't need the other part there. So in this example, can someone read it? Without water, the plant will die. Okay, where would you put the comma in this situation? After water. Right. Because, because just like this, the first part, without water, is a dependent sentence, meaning it can't stand alone. The plant will die, can be there by itself. But because it's after, without water, you need a comma there. Do you guys get that? Yeah. Let's look at the next one. Okay. Can someone read the fourth rule, please? Use a comma to separate any word or phrase from the rest of the sentence that is not essential to the sentence meaning. This phrase usually provides extra information about the subject. Okay. So, to explain this, it's easier to see an example. Can someone read the first one, please? My brother, a 26-year-old male, is watching TV. Okay. So you see how the comma comes after brother and after male? Why, why is the comma in those two places? Because it's a detail about my brother. Without it, it will be a complete sentence. Exactly. Perfect. So it's just extra information, right? Can someone read the second one? Amy Rivers, my best friend, is going to the mall today. Yeah, the same situation, right? My best friend, just saying Amy Rivers, right? Explaining her in more detail. Alright, just one more example. Can someone read the third one? 
I am ready for my dad, a hardworking man, to come home. Once again, just providing more detail for my dad in this in this situation. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Can someone read that, please? Use a comma to separate a quotation from the rest of a sentence. Now let's go to example. This example says, can someone read it? We need to buy more sugar, she said, before it runs out. Okay, so for this one, because the word she said is there, you put a quotation around what she said, right? And then, where would you put the comma? Behind the sugar. Behind sugar? Okay, and you put that comma there because use it to separate what she said, right? Mm -hmm. So basically anytime you say he said, she said, you put a comma after the word before that, right? That's generally how the rule goes. Okay, can someone read the sixth one, please? Use a comma to separate any introductory elements from the rest of a sentence. Okay, so an introductory element is like, hi, hello, sir. Things that you would normally talk to some when you're talking to someone, where you would pause after it. Right. For an example, someone read the first one, please. Hi, how are you? Right. Okay. Now, where would you put the comma? After hi. Right. Exactly. Because when you're talking to someone, you say you don't say hi, how are you? You say hi. You pause. How are you? Right. That's the reason for this rule. It's just basic talking. Can someone read the second one, please? Yes, I would like more water, please. Exactly. So the comma is after yes, because for the same reason, right? When you're talking, you want to pause after it. Okay. Seventh one, please, someone. Use the comma to separate the name of a city from the country or state. Okay. Now let's just take a look at an example for this. I live in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. Where would you put the comma? Behind Chapel Hill. Exactly. And why is that? Because it's uh, city, state. Exactly. Right? City, state. Just how you put a comma after Los Angeles, California. Okay, the eighth and final comma rule. Can someone read this? Use a comma to separate the day of the week, the day of the month, and the year. Okay, and once again, let's look at an example for this. Can someone read this, please? Today is Thursday, April 18, 1943. Okay, and where would you guess put the comma in this sentence? Behind Thursday and behind April 18th. Okay, Thursday, April 18th. Alright, just like this rule states, you put a comma between the date, the day, and the year, right? Mm -hmm. So that's how, that's why those commas are there. It's just to separate, make things more clear, you know? Okay? Now that we're done with colons, let's move on to semicolons. Now, the point of a semicolon, it basically replaces a period in most situations. So, let's get into the rules right now. Okay, can someone read these, the primary functions of a semicolon? To, com to, to combine two closely related complete sentences, independent clauses, which are not joined by a conjunction. Okay, second one please. To separate complete sentences, independent clauses that are joined by a conjunctive adverb. Okay, the last one. To separate items in a list where commas alone would be confusing. Okay, now let's get into detail for each one. All right. so the first one, to combine closely related complete sentences, which are independent clauses, which are not joined by a conjunction. This example, can someone read it? The man was wet. He was standing in the rain without an umbrella. Okay, so you see the semicolon is after the man was wet, right? Mm -hmm. The man was wet is a sentence on its own. And so is this, right? He was standing in the rain without an umbrella. You don't need this or this for each of them to be there by themselves, right? Mm -hmm. But because they relate to each other, you put a semicolon instead of a period. In most situations, it would be just a period, and this would be a capital H. But because these... But because... These two sentences relate to each other on some level, you use a semicolon. That's what people confuse at times. Okay. 
Okay, and can someone read the second one, please? To separate complete sentences, independent clauses that are joined by a conjunctive adverb. Okay. Now, these are less common conjunctive adverbs. It's not everything, but these are the ones you'll see most of the time. Can someone read this example, please? Jane likes fruit. However, she does not like apples. Okay. So just like the first one, these two sentences re relate, right? Jane likes fruit. She does not like apples. And because the word however is there, you want to put a semicolon before it and a comma after any of these words, conjunctive adverbs, right? It's kind of confusing. You have to get the hang of this part. But generally when you see two related sentences and a word between it, like any of these words, use a semicolon and then a comma after it. Does that make sense? Yeah? Okay, yeah, let's try this. So this explains in more detail, right? Jane likes fruit. She does not like apples. They're, so, they're separated by a semicolon and the conjunctive adverb, however. Okay. Can someone read the last one, please? To separate items in a list when commas alone would be confusing. Okay. So just like the first comma rule, you use commas between lists, right? Between words when they're in a list. But in this situation, can someone read this, please? The school specializes in three fields of study. Economics, the study of the economy. Philosophy, the study of thought. And anthropology, the study of mankind. Okay. So you see how there's two different sets of lists going on here? The study of economics, the study of economy. So in this part, they, they specify each one. Philosophy is the study of thought. Economics is the study of economy. You see how those are two different lists, right? So in this situation, you use a semicolon to separate the first list and a comma to separate the second. You don't see this that often, but the reason behind this is because it looks really messy and it's really hard for people to read and understand if you just use commas. That's why you use a semicolon when there's two or more lists going on. Okay, you guys get that? Yeah. Okay. Now we're gonna do some practice. Got some worksheets here for you guys. One, two, three. These are some handouts to help you. So you guys have about five, ten minutes to finish this, and then you guys will come up on the board and correct them on your own. All right, so you guys finished with the worksheet? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go through each one one by one, and you guys are going to come up and correct it. All right? So for the first one, do I volunteer? Julio? Yeah? Why do you put the commas there? Because it's um, more detail about who is a number. Exactly, Beatrice, right? Perfect. Right, let's move on to the next one. Okay. You got another volunteer? Three of you? You guys are all going to do about three each. Explain why you put it there? Because that's more detail than needs to be there, and it'll be a complete sentence without, which is not my for grammar being there. Exactly, right? It's just describing the hit song, right? Perfect. Okay, let's move on. Number three. Mm -hmm. Why'd you put it there? Um, because it's after what they earned. Okay, yeah. 
that makes sense. Also because it's also two complete sentences on their own. Perfect. Okay, number four, that's you. These are the easy ones, it gets a little harder. Those commas there? Because the, you introduce the second introduction, the president, and then it's also some more detail. So right, like, exactly, about the president, right? Yeah. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm almost there, about halfway. Okay, number five, Nandy. Why'd you put the comma there? Because it's his name and an introduction. Perfect. That's exactly the reason why. Okay. Number five. Okay. Number six. I'm gonna have you come up some. Yeah. Okay. Why'd you put the semicolon there? Because. Exactly right. Perfect. And because you will not is basically like a related sentence to the first one, right? Yeah. Oops. Okay, number seven, can I have you come up again, will you? Why'd you put the commas there? Because it's the person, it's the person's credit card. Exactly, it says, it's just describing, right, more in detail whose name appears in the credit card. Perfect. Okay, number eight, can I come back again, Mirna? Okay, why'd you put the commas there? Because now about two weeks ago was more detail. It's not really necessary to be for it to be there. Okay, that's very true. See, with normal cases it would be a comma. You're completely right about that. But just because this part says has so far gone unanswered which is basically related to this sentence, right? It's like answering this part. You have to put a semicolon. Yeah. Like I said, it's really complicated. I mess it up all the time. You just gotta look for it. If the two parts of the sentences correlate, they relate to each other, you use a semicolon instead of a comma. Otherwise, that's a good job. Okay. Number nine, can I have you for the comma there? Because it's stating that he said that he meant to say something that he didn't say. Okay, right? So it's just like an introduction, right? Yeah. Obviously. <laughs> okay. Just like think about whenever you guys, how you guys would normally say this, obviously, you know, you put a comma after that, right? Okay, let's make this the final one. You want to do the honors with This is probably the hardest one.
can you explain to us why you put it in those specific places? Because there, I put the commas because it's a list. Huh? And then I put the semicolon because it's maybe it's it's one list and then now it's turning into a second list. Exactly. Okay. That's one reason to put it. Another reason is because, like I said, these two sentences relate to each other, right? Yeah. But your reason is completely right too. But yeah, you got it correct. Well, that's it for the examples. All right. Now, do you guys understand a little better the, the difference between the two? Yes. Yeah, like I said, it's really tricky. You know, it takes time. It really does, and a lot of repetition. Can you guys just throw up some rules for commas? Anything you remember? Uh, for the commas, do you use commas for the lists that are three items or more? Uh huh. Exactly. Anyone else? Do you use more? commas to separate a city from a state? Okay, perfect. Okay, and can I get one semicolon rule? Let's see if you guys remember that. These are a little harder. Um, <laughs> to combine closely related complete sentences, which are not conjoined, which are not joined by a conjunction. Okay, exactly. See, so, so you guys gotta try to remember these by heart. You know, you're not gonna really have these worksheets from when you go to college and stuff. So.